Uh oh. So last week I bought my very first original Indian motorcycle, a 1948 Indian Chief. And this bike is one of 3,000 Indian Chiefs that were made in 1948. And it's one of the greatest motorcycles ever made. I thought there was a gun holster. I don't see anything. Wasn't there a gun holster on here? How do we fix that saddle? You trust it in there? Don't pull the trigger. I don't know if it has a shell in here. It's an Indian. You're going to be comfortable. At least it has suspension. It is. That is good. That Before is good. my big three hour ride home in the freezing cold, we wanted to top it off with fuel, check the oil, and the tire pressure. Did I mention that it was freezing cold outside? The Indian Chief has three different fill caps on the tank. Two are for fuel, which each have their own pet cocks. You can turn them off so you can run each tank individually. And one is for oil. And it's very important that you don't mix these up. Wow, look at this. Look at this wire, Greg. Is this foreshadowing? Any chance you have an extra wire? What you got? It's got bubble gum on it. We'll put some uh, heat shrink. We finally figured out that missing link of what the problem what was gonna slow me down and that's it. Everything else is smooth sailing from here. How to fix your saddle under 1948. Just throw a couple screws in there. That's how you fix your saddle on your, watch the master. Shrink that shrink. Is that better than the bubble gum? A little better than bubblegum, yeah. It's still a little warm too. You could have opted for right hand throttle or left hand throttle. And police officers preferred left hand so they can shoot with their right hand. That's why the holster's on that side. Yeah. Yeah, you can shoot stuff. Yeah. We can fix that for you. But before I do that, I gotta actually learn how to ride this thing. And I need to get on some cold weather gear. First layer, regular underwear, then Long underwear. Second layer, part of my base layer. So these are meant for 32 degrees. I'm not sure how actually cold it is. Then we got this layer that goes on top. Then we got this layer, the pullover. These don't zip together, do they? Then I'm going with insulated, insulated pants. Looking good. Is that gonna, is that gonna keep me warm? <laughs> yeah, I should. So those skinny jeans got a lot skinnier. They're not skinny jeans, Craig. They're regular jeans. This is how they make them. You gotta be able to move. A little bit, hike them up a little bit. And if this isn't warm enough, we got the same color pants. Yeah, we do. If this isn't warm enough, I got snow pants to put on top of it. On top of this, got a Milwaukee, uh, you got an electric vest. I don't need to give Milwaukee any plugs. They don't do anything for me. I think that track's clear enough for me to get some test runs on that track. I, I think it, around the inside, you should be okay. So just like my Harley Davidson WLA, the controls in this Indian are different than a modern motorcycle. The clutch is on your left foot and springs back to engage. And the shifter is on your left side behind the seat. Hopefully I can get the hanger riding this motorcycle on the figure eight track so I can safely try to get this thing home. Nobody else is gonna have anything like it. Not even squirrel. <laughs> Not even squirrel. I don't got much flexibility in these pants. Give it a prime kick or two. One ignition or two ignitions? One. Oh yeah! There you go. Go off. Come up just a little bit. Keep coming up. Two points for the light. Oh. Then it's good black off the rest. The choke's still on. What's this one? Front brake. That's a brake. Front brake. All right. You get desperate, for go for the grass. All right. They say the shortest way to get somewhere is a straight line. It's also sometimes the bumpiest possible way. But for me, it was better than driving down the steep, icy driveway. <laughs> it's a little rough. <laughs> and after 10 minutes, I was confident that maybe I could make this thing home without getting hit by a truck. And that's only if the freezing temperatures don't get me first. Pretty sure he missed the gear. He'll get the hang of it. He did well with the other one. And Chad was right. Initially, I had a really hard time finding the gears. The throw was a lot longer than I expected. And sometimes, if you weren't perfectly in the gear, it would pop in the neutral. 
So just like any other modern day cowboy, by the way, I'm calling myself a cowboy now because I'll be sitting on a saddle. I was born in Texas and I'm currently watching Yellowstone. Like any other modern day cowboy, I stood by my iron horse and gazed into the great adventure that I was about to embark on. Feeling pretty good. It's got, yeah, it's a lot smoother than the 45. First, I had to stop because my bike was not complete. No Indian chief can take a trip without this one item. So I took the prodigal son home for a quick stop. I was also very curious to see what they would value my bike at. I had just paid fourteen thousand dollars for it. I feel like you're gonna need tassels. We need tassels. Look at that little flat tracker. That's a question for you. I need some tassels. Okay. The tassels, pretty easy. We'll get Ron to give you a hand with that. Price on your bike, you can probably do that. What, what year is it? 1948. Oh, 48? Oh, sh Is it original or is it? It's right out here. Oh, is it really? I drove it here. I didn't. Yeah. No That's some bike, huh? Runs good, too. Let's go buy them tassels. That's the one. Yep. Hey, See you guys later. See you guys. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. He was not able to put an appraiser number on my bike, and, and to be honest, not many people can. But the book value is between thirteen nine and forty thousand dollars if it's in perfect shape. And I got my tassels. The Indian Chief is not the most common motorcycle out there. And you could have ordered a 1948 in many different configurations, including the hand shifter could be on the left side or on the right side, right next to the tank. Let's grab that third gear. Aha! And as far as I can tell, all the 48s came with a speedometer, unlike mine, which has just a hole. I got so excited to leave, I forgot to put on my jacket. I was wondering why it was so cold. It's freezing out here. Put my jacket on. Get back on the road. Don't burn your finger on the head. You turn the fuel on, turn the ignition on. A little bit of throttle, first kick. Second kick. But no 48 has what appears to be, which is on mine, a Harley Davidson ignition, or this three hole dash piece, which appears to have come off of possibly a 47 Indian. But this, this little, I love my bike bell, which doesn't work, is completely 100% original. Now I've been riding motorcycles for a long time, but this is actually the only second old classic motorcycle I've ever ridden in my life. The other one was the uh, WLA and the Harley Davidson. That was a uh, designed in like the, the early 40s. This is, you know, a 48. This is five, five, seven, eight years older, and this feels a whole lot better. Now the other one was modified and the suspension was broken, and so we'll figure out what that feels like when we put it all back together and run it the way it should be. But this, I'm loving this. I mean, even when I was on the track, for the little bit amount of time that I was on the track for, very quickly I was like, yeah, I gotta, I wanna race this. I, you know, who, who can I go, who can I try to beat? Who can I try to best and go faster than? And that's what, you know, you look at these old bikes and you're like, oh, there's no way people were racing those things. Man will find a way to race anything that moves. And... I get it, like you, you jump on this bike and man, this is fun. And it's really not that different except for all the controls are completely different than your normal motorcycle. But you get uh, you get used to it. I think a stock seat opposed to a saddle might be an improvement in the ride because 
even though this thing has a rear suspension, I don't feel it. Every bump, I feel it right in my teeth. Now it's a very well-known fact, especially amongst mothers, that motorcycles are indeed the safest way of travel. But when it comes to an almost 80-year-old bike, and especially one that looks like this, it's very possible that something will fail that could ruin your good trip. Also, the tires are not gonna grip as well in this freezing temperature, but hopefully we don't have any issues with this motorcycle on the way home. So no matter motorcycle on your right hand would be a brake lever. That's your front, that's normally your front brake lever. lever. That's your main lever. That's 90% of what's stopping your motorcycle. And then your right foot, which is how this is set up, would be your rear brake. But the, you notice there's no lever up here. And actually the way this thing was originally set up was this was a twist throttle up here and that was actually to twist to change the um the timing of the motorcycle to retard the timing when you start it but this bike was converted to a, a 12 volt from a 6 volt and, and they have an electronic uh, ignition or something in there it makes the bike start up really really well now for those guys who are purist you know they're not gonna like that it really makes the bike a whole lot more manageable and to have a twist throttle on there is just weird. Now I never really give the reason of why I decided to buy this Indian. And I've always considered bikes to be a work of art. And it turns out, you know, I'm not the only one. Uh, Andy Warhol, one of the greatest American artists of all time, he also thought so. And if you don't know who Andy Warhol is, he's the guy who did the famous Marilyn Monroe pictures and the, and the Campbell suit paintings. Andy was a big fan of motorcycle riding and also painting them. Here's a picture of him on what appears to be a CB160, which is very similar to the Dream 305 that I've got sitting in my office. This painting that Warhol made is called the Manola Motorcycle, and if you ask me, it's really, it's a really cool piece. But the thing is, this thing is estimated to be worth around three million dollars, which is, you know, mind-boggling. Recently, I learned that paintings similar to this one get significantly more valuable over time. In certain cases, paintings can increase value even more than stocks can. That's why some billionaires invest 10 to 30% of their wealth in art. And now you can too with this company called Masterworks. Masterworks is unlocking a once exclusive art market to people like you and me who can invest in million dollar paintings like the Manola motorcycle without needing to break the bank and forking out millions of dollars. And they make art investing super easy. The Masterwork research team analyzed over 60,000 data points to find financially attractive works of art. They buy them, then they let you invest in shares representing the investment in the painting. And these guys know what they're doing when it comes to artwork. In 2020, they returned 32% to investors. And in 2021, they returned 21% from the sale of two paintings. With results like that, it's no wonder that over 325,000 people have signed up to do this. But my best friends at Masterworks are giving my viewers priority access to invest in their newest offering. Just click on the Masterworks link in the video description to get started. And don't forget to see the important disclosure at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. I mean, you guys have seen Red Notice with The Rock and Ryan Reynolds. Everyone's trying to get their hands on some famous piece of artwork, and this is how you can do it. Houston, I got a lot of fluids coming off my bike and a lot of smoke. Is this a safe place to pull over? Gosh, I found a more safe spot. Maybe that's a good type of smoke. Smells like the gassy kind of smoke. Guys, it looks like gas is just dumping all over the side of the bike. As dangerous as whatever is going wrong with my bike could be, it's never a good idea to put yourself in even more danger by just pulling off to the side of the road, especially with a road that has basically no shoulder. So we need to find a safe place to stop ASAP because I'm genuinely concerned that the bike might be on fire. It's weird. Uh-oh. Oh no! Uh oh. Uh, turn this, turn this side off. Turn this fuel. Uh, this was dumping out. I can't. Uh, uh. Whew. Oh, that was sketchy. That was sketchy. What happened was this hose got melted off and popped off of there. 
And because they're both connected together, the, the fuel from this side of the gas tank was coming out here, and that was coming out there. We were, the fuel was coming out of every possible hole. Every possible hole. Like, every uh, possible crevice that it possibly could come out of. It's a good thing I, I travel prepared with my mechanic. <laughs> What happened was I started. I was trying to reach down here to warm myself, and then smoke was just coming out of it. So I started to smoke myself. If you wanted to warm your hands, Craig, you should have just turned on the heat in the truck. <laughs> right. You didn't have to sabotage my motorcycle. Saboteur. It's not we're gonna run out of gas. Yeah. I got a little bit of gas. How about I put that in? That's a good idea. The sad thing is we've only been on the road for three minutes. <laughs> it wasn't as low as I thought. Oh no, I put it in. Oh shoot. Oh, that was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> I looked, uh, oh, that was just dumb. Yeah, I, you know. Full now. Hey, Craig, we gotta pull over. I can't feel my hands anymore. We gotta stop, cause Sean can't feel his hands. Ah, he's such a wuss. Something about wind chill. Being cold out. It's like 47 degrees. What we got, Craig? I got hand warmers. I got better gloves, too, if you want them. Can we shake these? There's a movie that came out in 2005 called The World's Fastest Indian. It's about an old New Zealand guy named Burt Monroe, who built his own streamliner Indian motorcycle with the hopes and dreams that he would someday be able to bring it to Bonneville to see how fast she'll do. I won't spoil the end for you, but it's a really, really great movie where Burt was telling a story to a young boy about him riding his bike really, really fast. This young boy said, Aren't you scared you'll kill yourself if you crash? No. I live more in those few seconds at those speeds than most people will ever live in a lifetime. And I thought, man, that was a really awesome line. Now I'm not saying that you need to be crazy and risk your life, but what I'm saying is, if you spend your whole life worrying about dying, chances are you're not living. You know how fast you're going back there? 150, 160 miles an hour. Yeah, that sounds about right. So in memory of this movie, which is based on a true story, and in memory of good old Bert from New Zealand, I think it's only appropriate that we name this motorcycle Bert. And with all this talk about death, it reminds me of a really great Bible verse. Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can kill both body and soul in heaven. How you feeling, Sean? Ah, my butt is killing me. That may be the most uncomfortable seat ever put on a motorcycle. I don't know if I can have kids again. Sean, why is your butt off to the side of the saddle? Wow. I think he caught hypothermia. Oh. We lost contact with him back on 283 a little while ago. 
Come on, Sean. It's cold. It's dark. I'm tired. Hey! Hey, come on in! I think it started running out of gas. I mean, it seemed like it was spilling it on the road, so. It is a little thin. Yeah. That's all right. Well, good old Bert did it. In the end, it wasn't really, the question in my mind was not whether the bike's gonna make it, it's whether I was gonna make it. But we did it, we'll see you next time, subscribe. And just to clarify, that three hour trip ended up being a six hour trip. So, even more fun.